Hi, I'm Jack Koenig, and I'm back today with another video in our ModuFlow series. Today I'm going to be talking about the pressure indicator option, P1 through P5. I'm going to start with the last one, P5, just because it's the simplest. It's simply the little blunt-nosed relief to atmosphere indicator that comes standard with all of the manifolds, except for the bare manifolds. But any of the manifold kits that come with fittings include this basic P5 option. So it's not something that you have to order separately, but I've said this many times, just remember if it's not for oil, these all come with yellow blowout discs that are for oil. So if you're doing a grease system, change it to a red or orange or some other colored disc, even in that P5 option. Beyond the P5, there was also the P1 option, which was simply this pressure switch, the 557829 pressure switch, that you just got it with a, a T fitting to go into the outlet and back of the pump and then you would put the pressure switch on there and wire it back to your controller. That was a more popular option with a controller like a WMP3 because the WMP3 had a separate input that you could use in addition to the cycle input. So the way the WMP3 was designed, you always have to have a cycle input on it, but the pressure switch is optional. The GLC 4400 in the past did not have the option to do both. So you either had to use a PLC or you were stuck with the WMP3 if you wanted to monitor both cycle and pressure. Well, this year, 2018, we made a change to the way the GLC 4400 inputs work and you can actually reconfigure the, what we call digital input three or four. Those were originally set as the remote manual run and the machine count input, but now on series F and newer GLC 4400s, you can actually configure the third or fourth input to be a pressure fault for a divider valve system. So now you still use digital input one as your cycle switch, but then either three or four can be configured as a pressure switch, which makes these pressure indicator options a little bit more pertinent on the module flow now. So again, the P1, no matter which tank you're using or which reservoir, you would be getting this pressure switch and you'd get a T fitting and just T it into the outlet. Now let's get into the high pressure blowout switches, options P2 through P4. P2 would be for the smaller cylindrical reservoirs. It's very similar to P3, so I'm not gonna show that. But P3 then is your cylindrical six inch reservoir, which be, would be the 12 or 20 or six pound sizes. They come with a bracket that clamps onto the tie rods and then the pressure switch mounts to that bracket and then you go from there with your fittings and tubing. P4 is the one for the tanks. So it has a different arrangement of tubing and fittings, but it's just because instead of going on the front, it mounts on the side like this, and it doesn't include a separate bracket in the kit because there's a bracket built into all the tanks already. Let's take a closer look at what's included in the kit for the P3 option and then we'll put it on as an example. When you unbox this kit, you get a Ziploc bag full of parts. You get the switch in a box already assembled on its bracket. And then you get the mounting bracket for the cylindrical reservoir. I've laid out the parts to kind of show how they get arranged. One thing that's missing from the kit is the actual copper tubing. This is something that you have to get from a third party. You need a heavier wall tubing than what you'll find at a lot of hardware stores. The tubing you need is frequently referred to as ACR, which is for air conditioning and refrigeration. It needs to have a heavier wall. So you have a quarter inch OD, but then you want a 30 thousandths of an inch wall thickness, which means it ends up being a 0.19 ID. So that's the kind of tubing that you want to get. And again, that's not included in our kit. That's a third party item. Here we can see the arrangement on the inlet side up to the outlet side. This yellow disc, I want to talk about that for a minute. As I mentioned in the manifold video, the yellow disc is only for oil. If you're gonna be doing grease, then you wanna swap out these yellow discs. You actually get an, a little envelope with a six pack of yellow discs. 
but if you're doing grease, you want to get a six pack of the red discs, which is part number 563-963, or for a larger system where it's going to have a higher pressure just under normal running conditions, you'd go with the orange discs, 563-964. So that's important because if you put the yellow discs in a grease system, they're probably going to just burst right away, even under normal conditions. So back to our kit. This goes. This is the piece that goes into the manifold. You have this spud here with thread on it, which allows you to put this together and ultimately have a spud here that can receive this fitting. The disc gets sandwiched inside of that. So actually, let's swap that out with the red one now just to remind us that that's where that's going to go. Then you're going to run your tubing up here, and that's going to go in to this side of the switch assembly. These two little screws are what actually mount the switch to the reservoir mounting bracket. And then just out the other side, you've got a straight fitting and then a quarter inch straight fitting that goes into a check valve. The check valve comes in a separate little baggie because we test these with oil. And just so you don't have oil running all over the box, this is bagged up separately. And then there's a T fitting and an elbow fitting. The elbow fitting goes in place of the fill stud on the reservoir, and then the T fitting goes into the elbow to receive the check valve, and then you put the fill stud on this side of the T. If this is being done on a cylindrical oil reservoir, there's a plug in that port that still needs to go out here. So you still end up building up the same thing, but instead of putting a fill stud here, you put that plug in here. A few other pieces that are included are a sticker that you're gonna put on the reservoir above the switch or in the vicinity of it when you're done. And these two set screw, headless screws that go into the side of the bracket that clamp onto the tie rods. So let's put this on the reservoir now and see what it looks like. A couple of quick notes on the beginning of the process. You're gonna be doing a little bit of disassembly most of the time you're going to be doing this on a brand new reservoir where you don't have any fluid in it yet. But if you've got grease in your reservoir already like I do here, you're going to need something to catch the grease as it comes out of the reservoir because the follower plate is going to want to push the grease out as soon as you remove that plug. Or I'm sorry, as soon as you remove the fill stud. So here, now i got a container that I'm going to just catch this in. While that's draining, also pressure, le pressure relief procedure. On a new pump you don't need to worry about that but on an existing pump where you could have pressure in the system when you remove this fitting, really the pressure relief procedure is just to loosen a fitting. So just remove it slowly here and the, any pressure will relieve out of the fitting without causing any harm. Okay, so we're gonna let this grease drain out and then we will proceed to install the T-fitting and the elbow. Now we've got the fittings attached to the fill port. We also have our new spud and nut and our fitting over here on the blowout assembly. The next question is, where do we mount our bracket? I finger tightened these fittings in and the point I wanna make is, if you go low like this, it's gonna be a really tiny piece of tubing that probably is gonna be pretty hard to bend and get in there. So on a 12 pound reservoir, you're pretty much gonna to need to go all the way as far up as you can to the top. So once it's in position, you can just take your set screws and clamp them down with your, I think this is an eighth inch, yep, a one eighth inch Allen wrench. But one other thing I wanted to point out is these screws are actually a little bit too long. These are the screws that we get with these switches when we buy them. So it would be a good idea to get out one of those electrician's tools that allow you to trim the bolts shorter. I'm gonna do that off camera here, get these shortened up a little bit and then we'll reattach this here as high as it can go. And here is the finished product. We've got our tube coming from our blowout assembly up into the inlet side of the switch assembly. The outlet side comes down into that check valve and then we've got our T with our fill stud and our return to reservoir. Again, if this was oil, there'd be a plug here that would have been removed from this port and we put it in at the end. The last question is where to put our sticker. With it going all the way up to the top here, I, if this was a 20 pounder and I had room, I would put this up above it where it's more noticeable. Here I'm gonna just have to stick it somewhere around 
and hope people still notice it. On the tank, I think this is kind of the obvious spot for it. One other thing to note about the tank is that these are in reverse. I'm gonna show you a little closer detail here in a second, but on the tank, it actually comes up the left and out the right. On the cylindrical reservoirs, it comes up the right and out the left. That's the difference between these two assemblies. But other than that, the only thing we have left to do is hook up our electrical connector. There are just bare terminals inside here. Normally you'd wanna to connect to common and normally open because then the switch will close on fault when that pops out. So you just, there's a couple of screws here you can remove to get at those terminals. And then you can either put on a piece of half inch conduit because this is half inch NPT thread or like what was done up here, you could put on some other kind of an electrical connector to add a cable. But that's the last thing to do then. Now that all of our fluid connections are done, we can just hook this into our GLC 4400, our PLC, or if you're still using a WMP3, you could hook it up to that as well. Of the three kits that we offer, two of them are pretty much identical except for the bracket. The cylindrical reservoirs have a different spacing between the tie rods for the five pound reservoir versus all the other cylindrical reservoirs which use a six inch diameter tube and therefore have wider brackets. So those kits are all the same and they use the same switch assembly. But between the tanks and those cylindrical reservoirs, you can see here that these are basically mirror images of each other. The interesting thing is the bills of material or the list of parts that we use to build these switch assemblies are identical. The only difference is which side we put this bracket on. So if for some reason you have one on the shelf that is one way and you need it to be the other way, you can simply take the bracket off, move it to the other side. So basically move on this one, move everything from one side to the other and you'll have the other bracket. So the one in my hand is the 563292 that's used for the cylindrical reservoirs. This assembly is 563291, which is used on all the tanks. But again, they're really the same parts just put together in a different arrangement. So if you simply disconnect everything and move the bracket around to the other side, then you'll have the other assembly. And if you're in a pinch, you can do that if you have one on the shelf and not the other. So just to review and summarize what we just covered, P1 and P5 are relief to atmosphere indicators. P5 is just a relief to atmosphere with no electronic indication. So really it's just a visual for you. And then P1 adds the electronic indication to that visual, but it's still gonna vent to atmosphere. The high pressure blowout assemblies, P2, P3, and P4, are ultimately a return to reservoir kit that gives you the electronic indication as well. So that's the difference between these five pressure indicator options. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about ModulFlow systems, their accessories, or any other Graco product, feel free to contact us.